Welcome back. Leading the league on a Tuesday, J.P. Morosi with some vital information. I don't know how we got so sidetracked this winter on dog names, J.P., uh, but in the case of Jung-Hoo Lee, who we're learning more about after signing his big deal with the Giants, we finally have an answer to that very elusive question. Uh, Matt and Harold, good morning. This is the winter of the canines around Major League Baseball. Yes, we finally got to learn the name of Shohei Otani's dog, the appropriately named decoy. And now for Jung-Hoo Lee, how about this? How is the name of his precious pup? There he is. And, and now that Lee has returned to Korea, he is reunited with Cow. And let me tell you, my friends, uh, he is a Dude, very poop highly anticipated star. Check out his return to Korea yesterday, or actually this is just moments ago, actually the last couple hours. Wow. So it's evening time in Korea. Look at how he was received. Uh, a great uh, video from my friend uh, Ji Ho Yu uh, of Yonhap News. Uh, just This is the way that he returns to Korea. The reception that he receives, a hero's welcome after that lucrative deal that he signed with the San Francisco Giants. Just gives you a sense, guys of the passion for baseball around the world. Of course, the 2024 uh, season set to begin in Korea for Major League Baseball. And, and this was a big time signing for the San Francisco Giants. They've wanted a superstar, a global superstar, and they have one now in the great talented center fielder, the grandson of the wind. Jung Hoo Lee. <laughs> yeah, so what does that make the dog? Would that would he be the grand, the grand dog? The great, the great grandson of the wind, perhaps. Great grandson of, of the wind. Yes, that was amazing I, video. By the way, at the very beginning when they shuffled off a case before Lee took his bow, you know, looking like um, somebody performing in a mall. Was that the dog in the case? You guys run it again? I, it, potentially. I mean, th this was basically the return right here, of right the head of state. Is that the dog uh, they're smuggling perhaps. away? Perhaps, although I, I think that the dog was was likely, and this is probably the, the next part of the story that we now have to uncover. Did he remain in Korea with the dog sitter? That's probably the secondary question here <laughs> oh, for all of us to address. But uh, but again, Jung Hoo Lee, I, I, by all accounts, a great dog father, as you will, and and someone that we uh, we we look at as being a uh, a superstar now of the game of baseball. All right, so one international star signed, as we've learned uh, for a while now. We know that Jung Hoo Lee, uh, he's going to the Giants. Nice deal for both sides. We still don't know where Yoshinobu Yamamoto is going to end up. Is there anything new in the last 24 hours about a leader for his services getting closer I think Matt and Harold on the Yamamoto signing we do expect that he will sign before the end of the calendar year and indeed very likely before the end of this week he now has I think a very good picture of where where the greatest interest is I said to you on the show yesterday that the Yankees are viewed by many as the front runner and, and I still think that is the case it would take I believe a tremendous offer from either the Mets or the Dodgers to pull him away from the Yankees, just given his longstanding uh, connection and affinity there. I, I also think that the Dodgers, when you think about their sales pitch to have Shohei Otani there, uh, making that offer is pretty unique. So uh, I, by all accounts, I believe it's gonna be one of those three teams, uh, Mets, Yankees, or Dodgers. And then once Yamamoto signs, that next group of starting pitchers, Shota Imanaga, Jordan Montgomery, Blake Snell, we're, we're likely to see some of those names go off the board too. But uh, Yamamoto, I thought it was very interesting in Jeff Passon's piece yesterday at ESPN, talking about the potential of a, a medium-term deal or potentially the really long-term deal, maybe even a decade-long deal. And, and typically, as is the case with a lot of contracts of this type, the opt-out is a major element to watch where it allows the player to build in a lot of leverage on their part without certainly uh, maybe giving that same long-term security to the team. So I'll be really interested to see not just the number of years. That, that's going to be a big number and a, a lot of money, but I want to know the opt-out and how that ends up giving Yamamoto even more power to secure his future now in Major League Baseball. So, JP, uh, simple question. We knew what Otani wanted. He wanted to be on a winning team. That was known all the way across the board. What's Yamamoto looking for? Is it just to come over here and perform? Uh, is it a certain market, East Coast, West Coast? You know, what's he looking for? Well, it's interesting, Harold, and this is one thing I've, I've been told about Yamamoto from multiple people who have a lot of connections to the Japanese baseball scene is this. 
he the, the team he pitched for in Japan was was the smaller quote unquote the smaller of the two teams in his market and as a result of that 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 he has this desire to play for the largest teams that he can because he is he's sort of done with he's being tired on, of being the, the secondary the team brother. Exactly. So he sort of does not want to be on the team that is perceived to be, quote unquote, the secondary team. He wants to be on the big team. And so to me, it is no accident that the teams that I just mentioned to you a moment ago, the two New York teams and the Dodgers are big teams. And, and that to me is what I keep hearing about Yamamoto's desires to be on the biggest team he can find, the highest profile, the superstar. He wants the big stage. And I think that is so interesting and so hmm. illustrative of what his big desires are to be prominent front and center. So from, from this standpoint, Yamamoto, if we if anybody were to ever ask out there, well, does he want the big stage? Is he used to the big market? In, in essence, it is the exact opposite of what we heard from Otani when he first came over, that he wanted to go more of the West Coast, maybe not the biggest market. Yamamoto is the exact opposite. Give him the brightest lights that he can find right away. All right, let's move on uh, because Cody Ballinger is a name that we kick around and do kind of a status check on with you daily. I'll ask you this pointed question. Who signs first between Yamamoto and Cody Ballinger, understanding that this is apples to oranges? Your guess as to who puts his name on a contract first. Yamamoto, and I feel pretty confident in saying that, Matt, just because with Bellinger, a Scott Boris client, you may see him play things out a little bit to where he gets a really good sense of where he believes his market should go, and he tends to stay there. We've seen Scott Boris before. He's not afraid to sign a player in January or even February. You think of back to Bryce Harper, Manny Machado, the, the, those, those types of contracts. But I, I, I look at this with Bellinger. The team that I'm watching right now is Toronto because we know how how invested they were in potentially landing Otani. Obviously, it didn't work out. So we know that they they have this appetite to spend big for a superstar and maximize these last two years of the Bichette Vlad Guerrero era. And and you see what what the what this group of four players did going back into 2023. Bellinger played like a superstar this past year. He did not play, play like a superstar in, in the immediate last couple of years that he had with the Los Angeles Dodgers. So the big question here is, do you trust that the numbers that you see on your screen right now are the true numbers of Bellinger? And I think it's gonna take a little bit of a, a higher degree of risk tolerance for either a team like the Blue Jays that needs the superstar or a team like the Cubs that saw him do that and believes that he can keep it going now for multiple years into the future. See, I, th I think we're all mistaking here when we keep throwing Otani out there. That's a total different scenario. People went deep in their pockets Outlier. and go, unique, yep. I'm in, I need this guy. But there's no way in the world the Dodgers would have gave somebody $700 million and all these other clubs if he was not that total unique quality. You throw him out. Everybody else drops down. I'm sorry. That's just a fact as no matter what we all do shopping buying stuff you reach out for that outlier and everything else. I don't go. Oh, well, I had it for that. So let me now use it here. It don't work that way. No way. No way. It's my take. I know it that's, hot, that's fair. <laughs> that, that, that's fair. Harold. That, 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 that's a very, very fair point. And I, I do think to, from that perspective, Otani is the unicorn of unicorns. There we go. Hot take has, has appeared on the screen. Uh, the, he is the unicorn of unicorns. I, I, I do th believe, though, there are certain teams that are right on the cusp and maybe a player away from being either a playoff contender or a team that advances. And teams that have the greatest urgency to win right now. I think we, we've seen the Giants make that move already with Lee, and they probably have maybe some more pitching moves to go. Uh, the Blue Jays, though, I, I referenced them in this very unique time. While I agree there's only one Otani, the Jays have to figure out who they really are from a standpoint of that, that spending level. And you either are all in trying to win a World Series with Vlad and Bo for the next two years, or you're not. And I think that's why many, many observers have connected the dots, I think, correctly between Bellinger and the, and the Blue Jays. Not sleeping on the sweater either, man. Yeah, that's it is, nice. It is a nice one. JP Morosi on a Tuesday, <laughs> uh, hitting all the big free agent topics. 